afternoon, Dwayne and Mama from Dry Creek Wrangler School. Part two of buying a used saddle. Um, Mama took the saddle and she cleaned it. Now I'm gonna, there's a link in the description of the previous video that we had to do with this. Um, and so the next thing up was to oil it. And we decided, I looked at it and I decided it had been so long since the saddle had been oiled that uh, what we need to do is just take it apart so we can oil it thoroughly. And Mama has indicated she wants to do all this and she wants to learn the process. So I'm going to guide her through this and help her, but she's actually going to do it. Now, before we do that, one thing I neglected to mention on the first video on things to check uh, when you're buying a saddle is you want to check your rigging. Now, there's a, there's a leather here that's screwed into the tree that you're centering, uh, your saddle ring is tied to. And then there's another piece of leather that goes back to the back ring, and it's the same way. You want to check those, especially if you're buying an older saddle. Um, if you can see, like the leather here that this ring is, is tied to, it'll start splitting on the end and on this end to the edges when they're worn a lot and the leather gets kind of old, it'll start splitting and coming in. You want to make sure this leather is all intact where it ties the two rings together. Uh, and you want to check up in here where this is attached to the saddle and make sure all the attachment points are solid. The holes aren't black around uh, your rivets or the screws, whatever they use, or so much brass, tarnish, verdigris. Um, some is natural and normal if they use brass, but too much you don't want the leather to be um, handicapped. Okay, so that's, you need to check that. So, but anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pull this stirrup leather, pull it all the way off the tree, all the way off the saddle. We're gonna take it apart and that way it can be laid out and then oiled thoroughly, okay? So mama, go ahead and take your stirrup hobble off first. That'll be the first thing you do. Yep, everything's really stiff. That's why everything just needs to be thoroughly oiled. Okay, go ahead and undo your Blevins buckle and drop your stirrup out. There you go. Take the stirrup off. Take this off. All right, now, this leather goes all the way up in underneath and over the tree and back down. So we're literally gonna pull it out. Now, depending on how thick your stirrup leather is, how stiff it is, whether how long it's been since it's been oiled, the ground seat and how close it is uh, to the bars, there's a lot of different deals on that's gonna determine how hard or how easy it is to take these out. And so you'll just have to experiment on yours. Uh, so mama, if you wanna pull that out, pull this one, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna feed this up to help. Pull it this way? Yep, just pull it right on out. And you'll have it's to... Attached. No, it's not attached. You'll have to be vigorous because that leather's pretty thick, it's pretty good leather and it's stiff, see there? There you go, pull it out, good job. Oh, I see. Yep. <laughs> All right, almost there. Okay, now the fun part's putting them back in. Uh, but we'll, we'll deal with that when we get to it. So we're gonna do the other one. So what you can do is you can take these, lay them out on the table, oil everything really good, oil this bottom up in here, oil it all really good. We're gonna do the other one. Make sure everything's clean. And also make it easier, you take that apart, it'd be easier to get up here, right up against a tree and get all that thoroughly cleaned and oiled if you're interested in doing a thorough job. So we'll do the other one. No need a video, it's the same process. Uh, but then mama can start, can start oiling, okay.
on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're very much gone. There you go. So one of the ways that we oil, especially if we do saddles that need oiling, is uh, we'll take a bowl and we'll put our saddle oil in the bowl and just get a small, cheap 99 cent paintbrush and just start brushing it on. And you brush the saddle thoroughly, leave it out in the sun if you got it or out in the warm weather. And then however fast the oil soaks in is kind of a determination of whether you need to add more oil or not and so start at the top of the saddle and work your way down just like painting the wall on a house uh, if you get runs you can catch the runs now if you oil and depending on the color of your saddle how much the saddle's been treated if uh if you get runs and you don't uh immediately catch the runs the runs will make a darker spot in the leather the uh, oil does darken leather so just be aware of that so just take the paintbrush and just brush it in and just be thorough. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to lift up the jockeys, you're gonna to wanna to lift up the skirt, you're gonna to wanna to get underneath the rigging, you want to do all of it very thoroughly. And so if you take the time now to do a thorough job now, uh, in the long run, your saddle will be in better shape and it will last longer. And you won't have to put as much time into it after every rain or everything that you go through. Okay, now you can see how shiny and wet this is. This is the first part that she did. And now she just did this, and this is already dry. Okay, so that will tell you, this doesn't need more oil right now. Um, these swells, when they build the saddle, the swells are soaked, and they're gotten soaking wet, and they're stretched tight over the tree. And so they take oil differently than this part does. So you can see the difference. There's not much time in between when she's oiling this and she's already oiled this. So if you oil it and it comes up dry like this, it's already dry, then that's going to tell you that when you're done, this will need to come back and will need to be done some more. But this probably will not. This will probably not to be need to be oiled as much again. Now it's darker. If you like the orange mahogany color and you say, oh, that's darken it dark brown, it will darken it. But once the oil dries, it it's uh, not as dark. It'll lighten back up. So now she's picked up the back jockeys and she's getting underneath and you can see the leather there of the rigging. That rigging is how your saddle is bound to your horse. And that leather needs to be kept clean and needs to be kept oiled, needs to be kept uh, intact it needs to be taken care of the less you clean and less you oil up underneath the important stuff the sooner it's going to get old and sooner it's going to get dry and it's going to crack and it's going to wear out and so you can see how i was talking about being thorough and getting up underneath there uh, and do the work that needs to be done
So mama just asked a question. It's a good question. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer it for you too. Cause when you're oiling, you may have this question. The rough outside of the leather, the underside, where she's pointing there, where it's kind of fuzzy, you don't need to oil that. Um, you just need to oil the smooth top side of all your leather pieces. But that, that part in her left hand, up there where her thumb is, you don't have to oil that. If you oil it up on top, and that's good enough. You wanna make sure you don't neglect your billets. Your billets for your back cinch, billet for the front cinch. Uh, you wanna make sure you oil the back cinch itself, your breast collar. The only thing you do not oil is if you have a leather latigo. We've talked about in a previous video. That'll just get tacky and sticky and it'll start stretching and it'll never stop stretching. But everything else, you don't want to neglect anything.